this is worth right about one fourth of the total penalty for not finishing the test section. On expectation, what does this mean you can do? I'll tell you something funny. If right, <clears throat> you get the first ten questions right, every other question wrong. and every other question right, right, and the last four right, you can still score 700. You can make a lot of mistakes and still do well, but your mistakes must be mistakes in very difficult questions. Does that make sense? Right. What does this mean for you as a test taker? It means that you have to spend a disproportionate amount of time on the first eight to 10 questions, because you want to make sure you get them right. If you get them wrong, and this, this algorithm is true for math and verbal, and it is independent for math and verbal. So how you do in math has no bearing on where you start in verbal at all. You're independent. So you can bomb verbal, and you'll still get exactly the same midpoint range question for math, or vice versa. Right? Now, after you do this, right, for you, strategically, this means that the place for you to make mistakes or rush, if your timing is bad, is in the middle and in the middle only. And it is not in clumps, it isn't skipping. You will get a better score if you work on a question, skip the next one, work on a question, skip the next one. You are much more likely to stay in your range this way than you are otherwise. Does that make sense? In other words, it is not wise to skip or to guess two or three in a row. If you're going to guess or skip, always skip one, work on it, skip again, work on it, skip again, work on it. This gives you the highest probability of staying, so to speak, in the zone. Make sense? OK. Any questions about this? Yeah, I did it the other way around. I rushed to the end. Right. <laughs> so this is, but this is, but this is. By the way, this is a a common. The, the test is counterintuitive, given the psychology of most people. The psychology of most people is, let me rush as fast as possible to the end, and if I feel like I'm doing well, I'm doing well. On this test, it's the opposite. It's, you spend as much time as possible in the beginning skip rush in the middle, and if you feel like you're doing badly, you're doing well. Because you're hitting very hard questions. In other words, if it feels like, wow, this is so easy, I've seen these before, right? If the test is not difficult for you, you're probably not doing well on the test. There's a pool, and the pool has about 6,000 questions per year. And they run a sample of the pool per month, which is why you can only take the test once in a calendar month. They don't want you to hit the same questions accidentally. Right? So from this pool, right, the questions you get will vary tremendously. And you have to be aware of the fact that if you feel like you're doing badly, because it's really difficult for you, you're probably doing better than you think. Right? So this is really a key issue about timing. Because on expectation, if we divide 75 minutes, which is the time for each section, by a number of questions, you end up with a minute 40 seconds per question, on average. This is not true. In reality, a good test taker will spend about two minutes for each of the first 10 questions, may actually skip a couple in the middle, right, and then spend a little bit more time at the end on the questions. From a perspective of test preparation, however, I will tell you this much. If your hit rate of getting problems right is not counted in under a minute, your preparation strategy is going to be off. In other words, you need to time yourself for purposes of this test for solving practice problems in a minute per problem, not a minute 40. Because problem difficulty varies, and because where you do them varies, you should focus on a slightly more difficult time interval for yourself.